Let's start with the the G7 meeting and the uh, announcement that's come out of the US that they're going to be backing this joint international effort to train Ukrainian pilots to fly F-16 jets. A bit of a shift in stance and avoids a, a sort of embarrassing split being on display, doesn't it? I thought it was uh, it was always likely this was the way it would come out. And uh doesn't mean the Ukrainians are going to get their F-16s in the air uh, and uh, operational instantly, but it, you know, somewhere down the line, this can make uh, this can make a big difference. Mm. And this, by the way, Kathy, to everything that has come from the West, um, including as a result of Zelensky's latest tour of Europe, and I think actually the West is doing pretty well in terms of backing uh, the Ukrainian military effort. Well, Rishi Zunak says that the sanctions that he's set out today show that the G7 is united. Is he right on that or not? Yeah, look, he is right on that. Um, I mean, of course, you can always find new sanctions. And of course, once you have a sanctions regime in place, loopholes appear. And so you have to move to plug them. But looking back on, on you know, my time in diplomacy, this is, I think, the broadest uh, and most effective sanctions regime that I've uh, come across and doesn't mean it's perfect, doesn't mean the Russians can't evade it, for example, by selling their energy um, at cut prices to the likes of the Chinese. But let's be in no doubt that the Russian economy is suffering as a result. The Russian people are, are being hit by it. Mm. And of course, Vladimir Zelensky is going to be at the G7 in person this weekend. Um, it's The summit's going to be discussing Ukrainians but Ukraine's proposals for, for its peace plan at um, mm -hmm. Zelensky's request. Of course, China has put forward an alternative, well, it sees itself as brokering peace. Um, do you think the G7 is kind of ganging up on China? Look, I think uh, when it comes to discussing how to handle the challenge from China, I think you will get agreement amongst the G7 uh, about how bad and unfair Chinese trade practices are, how bad it is that they steal Western intellectual property. Um, we will condemn their bullying of their neighbors, their intimidation and aggression towards Taiwan. There's a lot we would agree on, but the difficult place, Kathy, is going to be um, whether or not the Americans can get agreement to the sort of economic measures, banning certain Chinese imports, banning Chinese companies from certain sectors of our economies, maybe doing something about Chinese students, um, I don't think that there is yet um, uh, going to be the ground for a Western consensus on that sort of stuff. I was in Berlin just a few weeks ago, and I remember at that dinner this subject came up, and to a man and woman, a combination of business people and German politicians, they all said we weren't going to go down the sanctions route against China at this stage. Mm. It is. So you, you don't have to sort of look too far and scratch too far below the surface to see these tensions, do you, at the G7? And I just wonder where that leaves the kind of rules-based international order that has held sway for so many decades. It's frayed, isn't it, if, if not in pieces? These are very challenging times. And China in particular is essentially challenging the whole post-war rules-based system, kind of implying that these institutions really weren't made for them uh, to have participation of the weight that they believe they should. And well, also, they're right, aren't they, on that? Well, yeah, they are. But, I mean, they also don't, don't make the best case for themselves to be involved by the sort of mm -hmm. things that they are doing. Um, and uh, so there are problems with, with, with the rule-based order, but it's the best thing that we have and we need to preserve it, and that needs Western unity. It also needs, by the way, I would say, dialogue with China and trying to find ways to bring them into the system. But part of that is showing them that something like this appalling Russian aggression in Ukraine is not going to work. That's an mm. important message for China. Well, so do you think the UK government is right then not to designate China a threat, which is um, what Rishi Sunak had been planning to do and now hasn't? He's backed away from that, hasn't he? Well, I agree with with most of what Foreign Secretary Cleverly said um, uh, a, few, a few days ago in his speech. I mean, China is, Cathy, 20% of the world population. And, you know, if you cut yourself off from them, um, and if you designate them a threat, you might feel good for 24 hours after you've done that 
But what then? Mm. So I think it's better, however, however disappointing in the short term diplomacy can seem, uh, uh, that we keep talking, keep trying to find ways uh, to bring China into the system. In particular, keep finding ways of working with China, if we can, on climate change, which is the big existential challenge of, of the age. So, so you know, I understand it looks frustrating. It sometimes looks a bit weak um, uh, not to go out and call them, you know, condemn them, describe them as a threat and so on. But I still think it's the right place to be on balance. Well, then why not go the whole hog and get them along to the G7? That's an interesting question. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen soon. But there is something a bit strange about having uh, a meeting of the seven biggest economies, minus one, right? minus the second biggest. Mm. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's not going to happen, as I say, in, in the short term. But there is a real question about um, how valid a G7 meeting is when it's discussing international economic management without uh, a country like China around the table. Mm. But as I say, it's going to change soon. And just finally, you've got this spectacle of Bashar al-Assad. I'm looking at it now on the TV screens, just, you know, ensconced in, in a, an international meeting at the Arab League. You've got Russia cozying up to South Africa, threatening to, to go to a summit there of the emerging economies later in the summer. It's Putin must be watching what's happened to Assad and thinking, well, if I hang on long enough, people will forget all the horrors. He will indeed think that. And he will also think that the West, and he will look at what happened in Afghanistan, that the West won't have the resolve to, to um, continue to support Ukraine, to continue to take the economic cost, to continue to help Ukrainian refugees um, uh, indefinitely. And therefore, that his best tactic is to, is to um, continue to attack Ukrainian civilians and population centers and just to try and wait us out. And that's why it's so crucial that you get the kind of messages you will get uh, out of this G7. And also crucial that we give Ukraine everything that it needs for this coming counteroffensive, which I think is going to be potentially the crucial moment uh, in this conflict. But um, I agree with you, uh, Assad pitching up at this Arab summit, um, this proposition that Putin might turn up, turn up to this meeting of India, China, Brazil, and South Africa, these are not good. And the countries which are doing this ought to think about think about the messages they're sending. It wasn't that long ago that that we and America and a coalition of Western countries um, stopped and reversed the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, which was an assault on its um, territorial integrity. So how do they sit with that, mm. that, what they're doing now? I don't know. Well, also, do you think pressure will be brought to bear on South Africa to, to say it was not going to welcome President Putin? There's an international arrest warrant against him. Yeah, I mean, this is a, an interesting question. There's still some time until this summit, which I think is in August. So mm. there's several weeks to go yet. And uh, I think that all of the countries that are participating in this meeting signed up to the International Criminal Court. Um, and uh, I think uh, they have basically signed up to um, to arresting anyone who uh, who is uh, wanted by the court as mm. a war criminal. So I'm not sure how they square their international law responsibilities with having Putin there. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I'm not, I'm not convinced necessarily that he will actually end up attending. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it does look very much as if, you know, South Africa, you know, proposed doing it online and then uh, Russia has thrown its toys out the pram.